spent most of my life in Philadelphia. I was born in Philadelphia, spent most of my life there. I spent hunks, little hunks of my life, St. Louis to do this book. I taught in North Carolina for a couple of years. I taught at Cambridge University in England uh, for a couple of semesters. Uh, and uh, but most of my time was in Philadelphia. My father made Philly cigars and Garcia Vega cigars. And nobody had a college education. His father before him was in the cigar business. Uh, and I've, one of the things, uh, not in this most recent tape, but he elaborates on it in the most recent tape. Uh, my grandfather worked, spoke seven languages and uh, he was the reader in the handmade cigar factories because it wasn't used back and it was such a boring job and women made cigars mostly, not all, but mostly women. So to keep them on board, they would read out of the newspapers, like like the Muzak or something. And uh, so we read in different languages because they had different people from, who spoke Hebrew and who spoke uh, Yiddish and spoke French and German and he spoke all those things. And the owners of the cigar factory uh, only spoke usually English and some other language. So he would read in a language they didn't understand uh, uh, propaganda from Samuel Gompers. And he was a lieutenant of Samuel Gompers in the first union, which was the cigar makers union. <laughs> uh, I loved my father. Uh, I loved my father. Uh, so but we I was thinking, I was thinking, this is just a thought that came in. I was thinking just not this last night, but I have a long period of time in the morning where I'm in the in a waking dream. I take a long time to get up where I'm half asleep and half awake. And I think about a lot of things. And I was thinking yesterday, I think, for a while, about that I realized I had nothing in common with my father. There was nothing, there was nothing actually we shared. We loved each other, but we didn't have anything in common. There was nothing I did that he understood at all or could even ask a question about and, and learn about that. And that basically I feel that way about everybody, that I have nothing in common with anybody. Very seldom do I feel any commonality. My father uh, had charisma. And I know I have a certain amount of charisma. And that's when I say I'm charming as my other word for charisma, same thing, you know, comes, comes from the same place. I know that I can be abrasive. He was abrasive, uh, quite abrasive. Always talked on two phones at once. When he was finished talking on the phone, he never said goodbye, he just hung up. Uh, it was, that was the way he was, just abrupt. Uh, so we share that. So that is something we share, and I forgot that. We share that. He's sort of given me permission to be more of myself. It's my life in Philadelphia. Uh, my office closed, and I realized uh, I wasn't going to get anywhere in Philadelphia because the people who can, I was telling about Holmes Perkins and, and uh, Ed Bacon. Uh, my firm was cut out of work. My firm was called Murphy Levy Werman, and we did. We had some work. We were uh, written up in magazines for small projects because we were considered. I was a golden boy. I was graduated first in my class. I was when I was doing this reprint. When I, I was not doing the reprint, when I was being interviewed by the archivist of Khan, he wrote a major essay for the profound scrapbook. And he was put up on screen when we were doing a Zoom call, pictures of my student work from 1953, 54, 55. I said, where'd you get those photos? He said, everybody knew you were a good student. Student, The school took photos of all your work throughout your career there. I never have seen them, you know. I was hot, right, at that time. But on a completely different field, I was gonna be, you know, the architect, I was gonna be a special person. So that was it, anyway. When I decided to, uh, I was interested in everything else and my firm wasn't going, I just said, I'll leave Philadelphia. So I went out west and went to California where I didn't know a soul. 
I couldn't walk down the street in Philadelphia without saying hello to somebody in a big city like that. Uh, I'll never do that in Florida. I, did, I don't even know if I did it in Newport, uh, which had 20,000 people. Um, so I went out west because I had met this woman when I was doing, I had two visiting professorships, one at USC and one at UCLA. And at the very end of my time there, I went to a lecture at the, at the uh, museum, Lachlan out there, LA County Museum. And Charlie Eames was giving a lecture. And I was sitting next to this person when the thing was over. Charlie even called me out from the stage. So she thought I was a big deal. Anyway, I went out and I knew the person she was with and he introduced me to her and I said something very fresh. And I saw her a week later, we fell in love and that's why I moved out to the West Coast. Uh, that's a short version of a much longer because it took two years. Best reason to move. <laughs> so I went out West and I became Dean of a school that I was fired from. And then I went into moved from uh, we moved in together, and uh, she's a, she was she is a novelist, and uh, she had written one novel. She's now written fourteen novels, and uh, she always wanted to live in New York. She wanted to be a New York novelist in New York. She wanted to be part of that crowd. So after I lived out there with her for a while and started from scratch again, started my, I started a company called Access Press. I did a series of guidebooks to 22 cities in the world and uh, started some, uh, the TED conference. I moved to New York because she wanted to go to New York, it was her choice. Then we lived in New York for eight years and I wanted, it was my turn to choose where to go. And I wanted some place where I could grow things because I wanted to learn about growies. So, we went, we saw this mansion in Newport. I mean, a serious mansion. I mean, 17 bedrooms and one of the serious, and as I said, the Firestone estate. And uh, so we moved to Newport and then uh, uh, after 20 years there, I said, what the hell are we doing? You know, this is, it has to be another chapter and you like to swim and so, you know, you have a pool in the basement, a beautiful pool, a builder, grand pool called Grotto Azura and the whole basement and the spa and everything. And, uh, but let's have another chapter. Where can we go where it's not cold in the winter? And, uh, but it's still the East Coast. So we, it's not so far from Europe because we like going to Europe. And we said, well, let's look at the places in Florida. And we looked a lot of places. And by accident, she saw an ad and we must have seen 40 places. And she saw an ad for this house, which was designed by Legaretto, who was a famous Mexican architect. He was Barragon's student. And uh, we both loved it and we bought it. So we're here. Now I suspect this is my final chapter, but uh, I don't know, that probably will be my final chapter. It's just a series of, we, we don't work for anybody. So we can do whatever we feel like doing. I mean, we can move anywhere. Uh, uh, so, I have enough plus a dollar. <laughs>